welcome to Power Up with Uche. Now, Power Up with Uche has come to life in 2017 because we want to talk about issues affecting Africa. Now, under Power Up with Uche, we have Let's Talk Africa, dealing with issues in Africa. We'll be talking more, giving people the opportunity to air their opinions on social issues. We'll be taking you live into what's happening on ground on, on issues concerning people in Africa. Now, in order to get access to our videos and our programs, all you would need to do is go to www.citytalkblog.com. I repeat, www.citytalkblog.com. Now, don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Experience international standards with local flavors in a beautiful natural environment right here in Enugu. Welcome to Golden Ruya Enugu, where you can enjoy incredibly exquisite state-of-the-art accommodations. We have 100 rooms and suites, conference and private function facilities for up to 250 persons, excellent food and beverage facilities with a restaurant offering rich, super delicious local and continental cuisine, a lounge bar offering drinks from around the world, including the Exotic cocktails at Golden Royale Enugu. We have world class swimming pool facilities for adults and children, top class fully equipped gym, and so much more. Golden Royale Enugu 10 Basala Road Independence Layout Enugu. For inquiries, call 0816 345 1930 or visit www.goldenroyalehotel.com. Golden Royale Enugu, local flavor, international standard. commercial sex work in Nigeria. We will try to understand the motivation why a young woman or a young man with all the options left today to us would choose to live that kind of life. Now, I wouldn't be fair if I started going on without introducing these lovely ladies that I'm here with today. I would like to first of all introduce you to the lady on my right and that is Chini. Hello there, how are you guys today? And next to Chini is Devan. Thank you so much, Uche. How is everybody doing? I hope you enjoy and sit through the show. And last, but by no means least, is Laura on my left. Hello, lovely viewers. How are you today? Great. So, ladies, you know what we're talking about today. What exactly do you think? would make a young woman, I mean, just imagine yourself, what would make you want to become a sex worker? Not that I think you should become one, but you know, I'm just saying, what would, what, what kind of, what kind of things, where would you, what, what level would you get to that you would begin to sell your body for? I think the threshold for some is pretty low, pretty, pretty low. It takes that first instance of not getting school fees. It takes that first instance of Oh, I've written jam. This is the second time I'm, I'm writing jam and I didn't hit the cut of mark. Who can I go visit at a quiet moment? So for some people, it's a pretty, pretty low threshold. And for others, it's really extenuating circumstances. But for me, the way I view it, either way, at the end of the day, is it's a choice. You choose to sell your body for whatever reasons. That's interesting. I think it's a choice also, but I also think that there are limited jobs in Nigeria you know, and 
they don't have any jobs, you know, so they end up being sex workers. No, but so you're disagreeing with Devan in the sense that because Devan is saying that you can technically be poor but still not send sell your body. I think you can, but it depends on the individual, you know. But I still say that there are not enough jobs in Nigeria to um, have that choice, you know. I'm going to support Tini on that because I think some of the people who make this decision, they're not really making a choice, you know, to say I am happy being a commercial sex worker, mm. but they, you know, they take it based on circumstances because if they actually took it as a choice, they would be proud to display it. Right, say, yeah. I am proud of being yeah. a commercial sex worker, mm. but you see them hiding, they don't want to be seen mm. in public. So it's a mm, that's a good point. Yes, because when you are empowered, when you believe that what you're doing is right, when you think, well, you know, this is the only way I have to make a living and I'm proud of it and I'm taking control of my life, then you should confidently come out, step out and say, yes, that is what I'm doing. But they don't do that. Now, if, is it possible? Is it possible that these women and men, because you have some, uh, sex workers that are men as well, is it possible that these uh, commercial sex workers actually Right, because they are worried about the stigma society puts on the job and not necessarily because they do not believe in what they're doing. I, for me, I think it's about the stigma. And um, I think it's a bit presumptuous to think that uh, because they're not out there talking about it that they don't take pride in it. I mean, I have visited hotel um, bathrooms where you find a group of girls clustered in a corner, gossiping amongst themselves about who the next client is, what happened during the previous this and the other, and they are not, like, they're not squeamish about it. So the fact that they're not putting themselves out there doesn't mean that they're sitting at home and being guilty and feeling bad about it. As far as I'm concerned, it's about the stigma. I see Chini like, okay. <laughs> I mean, again, I think it also depends on the person. You know, I feel like there are different levels of sex workers, you know. There are people who are from good families that are, I don't know if we should define them as sex workers, but that's what they do. Because at the end of the day, you're sleeping with a man and he's paying. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not like he's paying you immediately. But I mean, sometimes he give you money for something go shopping, travel. That sounds like a relationship to me. It's not. I am dating a guy who do want him to pick up the bills. No, I don't know, but most of them are married men. So it's not a relationship. Oh, that's an interesting... Yeah, we're going to bank that. We're definitely going to bank that because that's a topic for another day because that is something we would like to share with our viewers. Do you see any difference between, you know, calling it a commercial sex, you know, commercial sex worker mm -hmm. or, you know, Aristo, like he used, mm -hmm. that, you know, because it's the same thing. You know? Actually, yeah, it's that, that's what I'm trying to say. That is a very thing. interesting yeah. point, Laura's yeah. phrase, yeah. yeah. You have sex money. Uh, you know, yeah, that's what that it is, is yeah. So, I mean, right, so technically speaking, it's a different type of sex work. Mm -hmm. On that note, I think we should bring up our guest, and she has worked in the field of development for a very long time. She started her career as um, a registered nurse in Nigeria, the United States, and the United Kingdom, and she subsequently went ahead and got a degree in Sociology and Anthropology, then a BSc in Agric Extension with um, Rural Sociology as an option, and then she com completed that wonderful uh, academic career uh, with an MSc and PhD in Medical Sociology. Now, she has been working tirelessly in the field of development, this woman that we are going to be meeting, and she's been recognized in, in, in with various awards, one of them being the Rare Gems um, Special Award for Contribution Towards Reproductive Health in Nigeria. Um, she's also a fellow on a training workshop on the International Family um, Planning Leadership Program in California. So now the list is on end and she has distinguished herself. She has worked and continues to work in the field of um, healthcare development. Now let's bring her on. Let's understand commercial sex work. Let's understand what triggers it, the motivation, and many more questions that we'll have. Ladies, Please join me, and you out there as well, join me in welcoming Dr. Bridget Ukechi Ona.
Welcome and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to come and join us today. Before we go any further, please explain to us what commercial sex work actually means. I engaged in, co in one kind of commercial work or the other. The difference here is that the people concerned use sex as a gratification for an income, which may be financial, which may be material, which may be psychological, and so So that basically is my concept of commercial sex work. Basically what you're saying is that for somebody to be categorized as a commercial sex worker, they must give sex in return for some form of gratification. Precisely. Now that brings us to um, something we were looking at the other day. Commercial sex workers, are they the same as sex workers or is there a difference? Well, clearly, um, non-sociologists or um, people in other fields may not find any difference. Or from is the society that gave that name. They were not born as commercial sex workers. Nobody is socialized in the sense of you are going to be a commercial sex worker. Stop. The society created situations for them to become sex workers in the first instance. The same society from the beginning of man gave the name commercial to them and called it a them and exclude, that clearly excludes those definers when in fact definition fits the definer's perception. You said in your own words, we've moved on from commercial sex workers because sex workers are people who get any form of remuneration or gratification. It doesn't necessarily have to be cash. Well, basically, uh, commerce is an activity that is carried out to get an income. When it is linked to sex, as I said before, call it that name, commercial sex worker. But in fact, it's a, a sex worker. That by implication, as the money or gratification, as I have said earlier. Yeah. Uh, let us remember that, that this is not specific to any particular gender. A male or female can be, uh, can be a sex worker. Is it respective of age? Anybody can be a sugar mommy or sugar daddy. Mm. A girl or boy does not necessarily have to come from a poor family or poor background to become a sex worker. Sexually transmitted infections are abundant. I can name 27, but we can't do it here. <laughs> <laughs> but I know we call, call HIV the king. Mm. And of course the implication is that the, 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 the person becomes HIV positive, and then all the implications of being um, uh, HIV positive, the person is positive because the test has been run, run, run and uh, they find that the person is positive, following a counseling procedure. Then, of course, another implication is whoever gets it, express it, known or unknown. Some know they are positive, and they go around spreading it in order to revenge. After somebody gave it to me, and then I'm going to give it to another person. Another person will give it to another person. And it goes around and around and around. And the most critical are those very docent housewives, stay home to prepare meals for their husbands or boyfriends, and the guy would have gone out with other guys where well, he's not, this is the way, if you want to get that oil well, or if you want to do this, if you want to open an account, so, 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 this is what will ha happen. And then he goes, or she goes, and does precisely that without even thinking of the implications. Emotions is carrying the person wild, and the person gets engaged in this sexual encounter, 
and implication becomes that infection. Doctor, if I may come in here, you have talked so much about the potential health risks mm -hmm. associated with this kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember watching a talk show on foreign station where commercial sex workers were brought in. The, these were uh, uh, people in the adult film, film industry, mm -hmm. and they were brought in to talk about it. And it turned out that before you know that one woman takes on those five men that are doing that thing with her, mm -hmm. and they're filming it, mm -hmm. these people, the men, are put through extensive physical tests mm -hmm. to be absolutely certain that they're not coming with any disease. Mm -hmm sexually transmitted, all of these things. Mm -hmm. Now, when you remove that health implication, that health risk, mm -hmm. what other risks are there? I'm, I'm glad that the story you told, you said foreign. Yes. Supposedly more advanced. Yes. Mm -hmm. Supposedly in knowledge and literacy, and the system works. Here we are, and based on my experience in Nigeria, such things don't. Mm. And uh, for you, for charming ladies like you, as you walk down the street, you're automatically branded a sex worker. There's a stigmatization and stereotype. When you are, one is branded a sex worker, that person loses grip with the family value system, in quotes. That person is no longer regarded as a person of, of some element of responsibility. They say, oh, that girl, oh, that expressway. But what is very clear is that, how did you ever hear people pointing at men? Mm. They point at women. That's the gender implication. Using their power, because if power, gender is based on power relations. And when we women, are bringing up our children. These sons are supposed to do what they have to you're a man. The girl said, no, 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 no. You should not go and cook. The boy, go and play your football. Uh, the girl, you shouldn't study mathematics. Mathematics is not all engineering, not for girls. And they start putting them down, and they start losing self-esteem. That's what I mean. That's the most excruciating psychological implication. And they said you can kill a person by not shooting a, a bullet when you bring the person down to that level. Have you ever gone to this, through the street of any African country and specifically Nigeria and here, Junior, Junior, would that Junior ever be a girl? No. It's a boy that is a Junior. And so that, that person replaces the father and the girl. Then you become a good girl when you bring a fat income to the family. How you bring it? They don't care. Adani, Adani, special daughter that looks like the, oh, behaves like the father. It's because that person is achievement oriented. Women are not supposed to achieve. If they achieve, they look like their father. If they don't achieve, you behave like your mother. Achievement is based on economic income. And that's the value that our people are pursuing that is extremely, for my own feeling, scandalous, to say the least. Because we are all made by one supreme God. In his image, irrespective of gender, whether you're male or female, every other thing is defined by the society. The biological dimension is decided by the creator. Yes. So, Doctor, now, you mentioned the fact that it's not gender specific in the sense that if a, 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 a female could be a sex worker and so for a male. From your experience, have you found a high percentage of men seeking women or men as sex workers? Um, men also seek men as sex workers. After all, what is MSM? men having sex with men. They are giving them different names now. There's a huge association of men having sex with men. And there are also bisexual. 
girls will have sex with females and they have sex with males. It's, it's played down in terms of um, girls having sex with girls. Super in secondary school, when a girl is going out with a girl. Alright? All right? And they all have those implications. In fact, by the time a boy has more feelings towards a boy, he will have a broken home. Because he's going to marry. The society says you must marry. And when you marry, you are expected to make advances to your wife. By culture. But things have changed. I will reflect some of the cultural uh, nuances or implications or prescriptions that encourage or discourage sex work. Experience international standards with local flavors in a beautiful natural environment right here in Enugu. Welcome to Golden Royal Enugu, where you can enjoy incredibly exquisite state-of-the-art accommodations. We have 100 rooms and suites, conferencing and private function facilities for up to 250 persons, excellent food and beverage facilities with a restaurant offering rich, super delicious local and continental cuisine, a lounge bar offering drinks from around the world, including the Exotic cocktails at Golden Royal Enugu. We have world class swimming pool facilities for adults and children, top class fully equipped gym, and so much more. Golden Royal Enugu 10 Basala Road Independence Layout Enugu. For inquiries, call 0816 345 1930 or visit www.goldenroyalhotel.com. Golden Royal Enugu, local flavor, international standard.